Welcome to the review of ISDTC4, a smart battery charger. ISDT has already established its position in RC world as a manufacturer of high quality and innovative LiPo related products, mainly chargers. This is however their first product designed not just for hobbyists and also the first one supporting cylindrical batteries. It's built around ISDT's 2.4 inch color LCD screen which is rather unique and so much nicer than anything else on the market. Without further ado, let's check what's inside the box. Apart from the charger, we get a 12 volt, 30 watt power supply, mains adapter, some ISDT stickers, a screen protector, a proper user manual in English, French, Russian, Spanish and Chinese, I must say that this is a complete package and the screen protector is a nice addition here. Let's have a closer look at the charger. On the front we have 2.4 inch IPS LCD screen with navigation buttons on the side and the battery compartment below. On top here we have a fan underneath a vent. There's the power supply input, USB charging port and USB input for firmware upgrades. There's nothing on the sides. And on the bottom we have another vent and some basic specification here. As with other ISDT products, the build quality is excellent. The charger is made of plastic, but it seems like it's a high quality plastic. It doesn't flex when applying the pressure and everything is extremely well put together, so no complaints here. Let's see what batteries the C4 can handle. When it comes to battery chemistry, C4 can charge pretty much all cylindrical, rechargeable batteries available on the market at the moment. Regarding the sizes, it can charge 44, 50 and 65 mm long batteries. Diameter wise, C4 can handle maximum 26 mm batteries in a form of 26650. The battery compartment here is cleverly designed and uses the space in a smart way without any moving parts. This makes the charger very compact and light. However, there are some limitations when it comes to this design. For example, C4 at the same time can only charge two AAA batteries or any AAA size batteries and only a single 20, 22 or 26, 650 cell. Also, charging shorter batteries like quite popular 16340 for example, it's not possible on C4. Since this is not a portable charger, size and weight are not crucial here. So I suppose ISDT could have made the main four slots here adjustable and leave the horizontal ones as they are or maybe make them even wider since the charger would be a touch longer. Of course that would make the product a little bit heavier and larger but at the same time a touch more versatile. Alright, I think it's time to power the C4 up and demonstrate why it's so much easier and nicer to use than similar products. And don't worry, the sound can be disabled in the settings so you don't have to listen to the tune every time you switch the charger on. On the first screen, apart from C4 logo, we have the input voltage in the top right corner and also a flashing gear symbol that points to the system settings button. More about the system settings in a second as I would like to start in auto mode and charge a few batteries which is super easy to do. What we have to do, just insert a battery into a slot and the charging will start automatically after the time set in the menus which is 3 seconds, 5 seconds or can be switched off altogether. And that's it. There's no need to do anything else as the charger will automatically detect the battery chemistry and adjust the current 
using the preset value depending on battery size. So for small batteries, the 44 mm long, it's 500 milliamps. For 50 mm long batteries, which are AA size, it's 1 amp. For most 65 mm long batteries, it's 1.5 amps. And that goes up to 2 amps with bigger and fatter 65 mm long batteries. One gripe here is that the preset current cannot be modified, which means that if we charge our batteries using different current, this will have to be changed manually every time. It's super easy to do, but not very convenient nevertheless, so hopefully ISDT will be able to provide a firmware fix for that. Now let me quickly explain what's happening on our lovely screen. And believe me, it looks much better in real life than on camera. In the top left corner, there's the battery chemistry. On the other side is the information what the charger is actually doing. There's a number of milliamp hours put in or drawn from battery, depending if we're charging or discharging. Total charging time. Battery voltage and charging current. And also internal resistance and battery temperature. According to the specification, there are five temperature sensors inside this charger. There is a nice graph below that shows the voltage change in time. Below there are indicators that show which battery information is displayed on screen at the time. This will cycle through all batteries at the interval set in the settings. It can be either 5 or 10 seconds or can be switched off. We can also cycle manually at any time by pressing any of the buttons here. Each of the battery slots is independent and has its own circuit, which means that we can mix chemistries here, perform different tasks and set different currents on each slot. As you can hear, the fan just kicked in, so this is how loud the charger gets. From what I notice, it doesn't get any louder regarding if we're charging or discharging, so this is the maximum speed and noise of the fan. In my opinion, it's quite acceptable and not distracting at all. Let me just quickly show you larger lithium 18650s. As we can see the battery slot indicator moved to the left now, but essentially we have exactly the same information displayed on screen. Now we know how to easily charge batteries in auto mode, let's see how to adjust charging parameters and change system settings. The system settings can be accessed from the main start screen by pressing and holding the middle button here. In this menu we can see the system information which shows us hardware and software info. We can revert the charger to the default factory settings. We can change the language, change the volume, change the backlight, low, high and middle. We can set the capacity limit from on to off. I'm not 100% sure what this setting does and it doesn't affect anything in the charger. At least I haven't noticed any effect on anything. We can change the auto charge time from 5 to 3 seconds or switch it off. We can change the display cycle time when charging batteries from 10 seconds to 5 or switch it off. And then we can go back to the previous screen. Changing and adjusting tasks or the values is very straightforward on C4 and can be done in two ways. Either before a task starts or this can also be easily modified during a process. If the charger is set to auto charge, we need to press any of the buttons to disable it and after that we can adjust the parameters manually. We can change the battery chemistry even though the MC4 can automatically detect the chemistry, it's always recommended to check the value to make sure the charger got it right. 
and adjust this accordingly if needed. C4 offers six tasks that should help to look after our rechargeables. So it can obviously charge and discharge batteries. It can put them into storage if you're planning on not using them for a while. The cycle task can help remove the memory effect. We can perform up to 66 cycles, which is probably a little bit excessive. Analyzing a battery is used to identify battery capacity and can also help improve discharge performance. And activation is used in case a battery has been identified as a non-rechargeable for whatever reason. We can adjust the current from 100 milliamps up to 2 amps and we can simply start the task. A few things to note here, the maximum discharging or storage current is 1.5 amp instead of 2 amps and also the storage mode is only available for lithium batteries as other chemistries do not require this or should be stored in discharge state. And also the final charging and discharging voltage cannot be modified on C4 and is preset according to this table. Now it's time to quickly check the performance. The C4 doesn't have any problems charging all four batteries with the maximum 2 amp current allowed for AA or 50 mm long batteries. The same goes for larger 65 mm long cells where the maximum charging current is 2.5 amps and also the 26650 batteries with 3 amps. I'm cheating here a little bit as I've inserted my 80mm battery the way the C4 thinks is actually the 26mm one. We can also charge at the same time the slimmer battery at 2.5 amps and the bigger one at 3 amps. It looks like the C4 cannot quite reach 25 watts of its maximum power output. As we can see on the first channel, when the voltage went up, the current dropped a little bit. At around 22 watts output in total, it's not far off, but not quite there nevertheless. I haven't tested the charger with a different power supply, so this can also be the limiting factor. When discharging 50mm long batteries, the maximum discharge current seems to stay at around 1.1 amps, regardless of how many batteries a discharge at the same time. No problems with discharging at maximum 1.5 amp on both slots. With the higher voltage, the discharging current will drop a bit and that's because the maximum discharging power is about 10 watts. So the C4 doesn't have any problems reaching its maximum discharging power at 10 watts. Let's quickly check the final voltage after charging my NIM batteries. They all rested for about 10 minutes now. So the first one should have 145. This one should have 145 as well. This one should read 144. So the final voltage is exactly where it should be for this type of batteries. And the voltage readings are also very accurate here, especially considering that my multimeter seems to overread the voltage by just under 0.01 volt. The lithium ion batteries end up slightly undercharged on the C4. Instead of 4.2 volts, I normally get around 416, 417 volts on the charger and on the multimeter four nineteen. That's probably closer to four eighteen actually since my multimeter overreads a little bit. USB charging works very well as well here. We get 2.2 amps at just under 5 volts, which matches the specification. And finally, reverse polarity protection test.
working as advertised. And this brings me to the end of the review. I hope that at this point you have a pretty good idea what to expect from the C4. I like the charge a lot actually, despite a few shortcomings. They are really minor in my opinion, but on the other hand, can be important to some users, that's why I need to point them out. What I mean is the fact that only two AAA sized batteries can be charged at the same time, or the fact that the preset charging current for auto mode cannot be adjusted. Also, we cannot use the C4 with batteries shorter than 44mm. When it comes to performance, the charger couldn't quite get the maximum 25W power output. At around 22W, it's not far off though. And finally, my lithium 18 650s end up slightly undercharged. If the small issues I just mentioned don't matter to you, I'm sure you will be happy with the charger. It's a solid product with good performance, excellent build quality and original design, has a great IPS screen and intuitive user interface, supports all chemistries and three most popular battery sizes, offers smart charging algorithms with an auto charging mode and reverse polarity protection, and also supports wide input voltage between 12 and 24 volts. I think that with C4, ISDT definitely managed to make an impressive entrance into the world of rechargeable cylindrical batteries. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions or would like me to test something specific, please do not hesitate to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.